Guys, welcome back to the Off Garage here in wonderful, beautiful, bit of cloudy situation today. Not too bad, battery is charged to 75% already. And we have nice and sunny 43 amps, 43 spring amps outside because it is springtime. Guys, in today's video, um, we want to, I just need your advice again, I think. I'm not sure which is the best way to uh, move forward here. So this is about the extension of the battery shelf now. As you know, we've got three batteries in here, around 44 kilowatt hours or something. It's not about so much about gaining more capacity because, um, well, I've got, I've got enough capacity here. But um, as you know, when we do these battery testings here, I have connected them to the Powerwall 2.0. And use the um, the Xia inverter down here or the or the Phoenix inverter up here to put power back into the battery shelf, or use this one as an off grid inverter. We can charge the vehicle phone and we can do capacity tests and everything else. We have one solar charge controller connected, the Servo GX where we do all the testing with, the Lynx Peter, the shunt which we don't use, it's just an expensive uh, fuse holder, and we also have the links power in here which we have fused with four different fuses so we can install four different battery banks battery towers when we do the battery testing here i also do a bit of a cycling test with these batteries and see how they perform when they're fully charged and test different settings in the bms and everything so um unfortunately i can only discharge these batteries here when i'm at home then I plug in the vehicle usually or turn on the Phoenix inverter as a generator, which then recharges the battery shelf here a bit. But these are all fairly constant loads and, and it doesn't really reflect a real world scenario usage of the battery where you have different loads, then the battery pauses, recharges a bit, another load comes and so on. So I would really like to have these batteries here actually connected to my production facility here and then maybe even turn off these batteries and run only the Seplos Polo Tower, for example, just for a couple of days and see how it performs. With daily interactions, recharging to 100% and everything, gives us a far better picture than what I'm doing right now here. So the main, the main task now is how do we connect these batteries to our system? Because we want to keep, we want to keep all these solar charge controllers and the MultiPlus in here. But run the show not from the battery shelf anymore, but with these batteries. Or maybe only with one battery. But then a 100 ampere hour battery is not big enough for me. So I probably leave one or two of these batteries connected, plus the Jackie battery, for example, or the Mason 135 ampere hour battery there. Or any other battery, you know. I want to mix and match as we go, as we need it. But I thought about it for so long now. How do I connect these batteries here? easy, safe, and convenient to our battery shelf. So I think I've got a couple of scenarios down here. So the, the first scenario actually involves this huge 600 volt, 200 amp circuit breaker, DC circuit breaker here. It's an MCCB. And this is a very similar breaker to the no arc we have here as our main switch as well. So I thought, well, if I put this one in, and connect one side, connect one side to our two bus bars. Why is there no light on? I make a video without the light. So there you can see the bus bars in the back up there. And this is where the breaker needs to connect to. And this can be anywhere. It can be, it can be up there, can be in the middle shelf or on the bottom shelf or something. I just found um, there's enough space actually behind this clear cover where the bus bars are. There's pretty much no space here in the middle shelf because of this diagonal support. And the top shelf has this horizontal support here. So the only real option to fit this big bastard is in the bottom shelf, which is uh, totally fine. And then the output of the circuit breaker would be a 350 amp Anderson connector, which I would just mount somewhere here. And then I can plug in another Anderson connector, which has cables going all the way back to our power in. You can easily fit it here on the bus bar. No big deal. The link shunt will go and will be replaced with a switch. So I can power these batteries either from this side or from this side. I know there's no interlocking of these two switches then. So I possibly could feed this from both sides. 
but it's not a safety concern. It's just, it's more of a functional problem then because our measurement would be off then. But then I would end up with all these um, spaghetti cables here, these hanging around from this power in. And the whole wall here is just a temporary setup anyway, because this will all disappear once we redesign this area, which will come in winter. Oh, winter is over and I haven't done it. Duh. Then I thought, why would you want to connect all this with a big breaker and Anderson into these bus bars, if you use these bus bars anyway? Why not mount these bus bars somewhere over here and connect it on one side to our main bus bar system of the battery shelf and then have these cables coming out down here and connect the batteries as we need them. Most of the batteries are coming with circuit breakers anyway these days and you could connect the batteries safely before you flick the circuit breaker as a main switch. That would save me to install this big bastard here. If we don't install another circuit breaker like this big thing here, well, why not um, why not use some um, Anderson connectors anyway? Why not why not make little cutouts here and have them pointing this way? Why not mounting two or three or four of them in the switchboard here? Connect them to the bus bar on the back so we can have a piece of cable, positive, negative with an Anderson connector. Connect this to our battery, plug this in and then use the circuit breaker here on the battery as our main switch to turn it all on. I don't need any safety features here at all. It is just an extension of our internal bus bar. This one here would be an additional safety switch, a main switch which we can use to turn this extension completely off. But then whatever we connect, we always have to use these 350 amp Anderson connectors, which they, um, they are a bit of a pain in the ass to disconnect actually, just because of the mechanical structure. And we can also mix and match this somehow. We can also put an Anderson connector and one of these main switches here um, in this switchboard. And then we can physically turn off the Anderson connector with this switch. So probably underneath something like this. So we can turn off the connection here on our main bus bar. And we can also turn off the connection here with our main switch on the other side, on the battery side then. Which uh, is good as well. Whatever solution we are coming up with and deciding to do. It will be a lot of work, a lot of work, because I have to take off this plate. Because I have to take off this part of the shelf. I have to unscrew all the circuit breakers. And then I should be able to take off this aluminium plate. And the circuit breaker should actually stay in place because they are still connected to all the cables. So they should be staying in the position where they are actually, roughly. And this then gives us enough room to make another cutout and also drill the holes in the existing bus bars and then uh, put the plate back on and it's done. It's that easy. This will probably take me a week or so at least. Every night and the weekend there will be a lot of late night show action then. So again, I want to be as flexible as possible here, but also keeping in mind that I want to redesign this whole area here anyway. Not the power wall, not the battery shelf, but the whole area around it. But having an additional connection for another battery here would be ideal. And I cannot use any of this situation up here in the, in the top compartment of the shelf because this is all only solar inputs and load outputs, but no battery connection. The battery connection needs to be below the smart shunt there. Otherwise we are measuring completely wrong. And there the only possibility is to connect to the bus bar there, there or here. And here's most of the space. And then I can pull the Seplos Polo Tower forward, put it over there, connect it. Turn off these three battery banks and run the whole show just from the Polo battery and see how it performs in real world scenarios, daily charging, discharging, different loads, different charging conditions, cloud, sun, everything. I think it's a much better and fairer method to test actually the BMSs and batteries. So this was a good start here with the Seplos Powerwall 2.0 and the test bench basically. But at this point I wasn't aware that I'm going to test so many different batteries here. And I want to do a better testing than I did in the past. You know, discharging the batteries to 70% in the evening while heating up our hot water, for example, or charging the vehicle. 
and then recharging it the next day. So, and because we've got the best community here in the world, I want to ask you, what is your opinion? What what would you do? How would you approach this one? What solution of these ones I came up with would you use? Would you use anything completely different to that, which I haven't thought about it yet? So let's do another community project here. Build this one together. I hope I haven't forgotten any details yet, but um, that's basically what I'm trying to do now, to trying to achieve. Probably forget everything we just talked about, or at least most of it. Uh, it is now a few days later, and I thought about these possibilities, these um, options we have. But I think um, mounting Anderson connectors directly to our high amp bus bar inside the shelf here is not a good option because um, there's no fusing in between and adding another main switch for just an Anderson connector is... I haven't got enough space to get all this cabling then done. So from all these options now, I would say the one with the circuit breaker, with the main circuit breaker here, is the only viable option. Because this gives us the peace of mind when I turn this one off, there's positive and negative disconnected. There's no connection to any of these additional batteries. Because especially now with the new, with the brand new JKBMS coming in, I want to do a lot more testing with the Frankenstein battery. And the Frankenstein battery, quite frankly, is a good battery to connect to our battery shelf anyway. This is this is the full do-it-yourself battery. I want to do a lot more testing with the Frankenstein battery under heavy load, heavy charging. And so far, we haven't done much testing with it. We have tested two different BMSs so far and did one capacity test, and that's it. Wow, look at this red color. Nice. So, battery shelf with our three battery banks plus the Frankenstein battery here in our coffin in the Zeppler's Mason battery box with the brand new JK BMS. But we need to connect the Frankenstein battery somehow back to the battery shelf. And I think this is where the this is where the big bastard breaker comes in and the Anderson connector here. I want to use an Anderson connector. I want to I want to have something easy, quick and safe to connect to our main bus bar. And now I will get comments about Anderson connectors again, that too high of a resistance and with pulling or pushing 200 amps across this connection, then we've got a huge voltage drop and everything else. But again, this is part of the test as well. How good are these Anderson connectors in this size actually? So let's push 200 amps through such an Anderson connector and see how bad it is, how good it is, whatever. So the only, the only main problem, the only problem is if I, if I mount this here flush with our aluminium panel, there is probably, there is probably a space of 10 millimeters between the back of the circuit breaker and the main bus bar. So I probably need to move this one a bit forward here. I'm not 100% sure how to mount it yet, but I'll, I'll just start with it and as I said, it will be long evenings in the garage here. And we also have to turn off all our three battery banks here because um, we cannot work on these live bus bus stand. It's far too dangerous. We have to turn off the main breaker. And then we have to somehow feed our main bus bar system up here with, um, with um, some of these spare batteries just so we can work safely on the main bus bar system. Put this breaker somehow in. I don't know how. We will find out. As I said, lots of do-it-yourself work and lots of late-night shows. By the way, I link this breaker down in the video description here. They are amazing. Super heavy, super sturdy and super specs. I thought about using some flexible bus bars usually used to um, connect your battery cells together. You know, you can get these longer ones as well. Maybe you can use two of them to connect the circuit breaker to our bus bar system in the battery shelf. We have to find out. I guess um, it'll be interesting. All right, guys, so far this video from tonight. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here on the channel. Thanks for your donations. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for your emails. Please do not send me emails. Please leave all your comments and questions down under the videos. I'll read them there and reply to you. And until the next video, guys, when we do... Um... <sighs> well, in the next video, we want to do something with the Zeppler's battery again. And I want to show you what is going on with the Zeppelos battery and the Zeppelos BMS 3.0. Until then, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. 
see you then bye bye yeah i think i think this is this is the way to go